Hey. Hi again. In my previous video, I had alleged that increasing imagination is not only doable, and we'll get to that a little later, but, but somewhat necessary. Okay, why do I think it was so necessary? Based on the performance of my students last semester. Obviously, there was a lot of anxiety generated by an exam that involved some creative that demanded some creative synthesis on the part of the students. Most of the questions were relatively open-ended and demanded several, at least one sentence as an answer. Sometimes it was longer, a couple paragraphs, but usually at least one sentence. Gotta give me a complete English sentence. I'm not feeding you the words. You can't just circle something. You have to generate and articulate and have an idea. The reason I had did that was to maximize the potential for partial credit. I was trying to be nice, but it's debatable whether I succeeded or failed miserably at being nice. Also, I found interesting results uh, in the assignments and in the exam. So, like, there was one question I, th I thought I was obligated to have a multiple choice section, and I also noticed that in English history, we have about five different important people whose first name is William. So we had, which will, the multiple choice matching section. And one of the, quest one of the questions there was, uh, I am William the Silence grandson. And then there's the answer options. Bunch of people, Wallace, Shakespeare, Wilberforce. And there's William the Silent and William the Third. So there's about six answer options. If everyone was guessing, you would have seen answers all over the place, equally distributed among the six. If everyone was really paying attention on those lessons on early 17th century Anglo-Dutch history, everyone would pit circle William the Silent. What actually happened was I got about a 50-50 split between William the Silent and William the Third. So half of the people got the answer right, clearly listening good. Uh, they're fine. Let's look at the half that got the answer wrong. In the half that got the answer wrong, had they been guessing, you would have got an equal distribution of the five wrong answers. But I only saw a very few single-digit percents on the other wrong answers. Almost all the wrong answers were this one wrong answer. William III. And William III is the right answer if you stop reading mid-word, ignore the apostrophe S, space, grandson. If you ignore that and stop reading, right at the T at the end of William the Silent, it looks like you're matching William the Silent to William the Silent. However, with the apostrophe S space grandson. You're saying that William the Silent is William the Silent's grandson. 
Now, maybe there is time travel in a grandfather paradox in Anglo-Dutch history, but none of the students explained that to me in their answer, so I don't know. Generally, a person is not their own grandson. That's pretty obvious, and so you should guess anyone but William the Silent as William the Silent's grandson. Obvious. But only if you keep reading beyond the, e beyond the end of that word. So it looked like some people were, uh, almost half the class, was in such a hurry to get the right answer that they didn't read to the end of the sentence. Only another word and half. Almost all of the answers that were wrong seem not to, to be due to random guessing, like I just wasn't there, I'm gonna guess a random answer, but due to anxious haste of picking what seems to be the right answer as soon as you get to it and not reading to the end of the sentence. That... What kind of problem is that? That's not really one of diligence. That's not really one of reading and memorizing the material. That's a problem of tactics and test-taking methods. That general kind of thing, at a broader level, is what we're going to focus on in my course on navigating conversations. I think it'll be especially helpful in navigating difficult cross-cultural conversations, but really it would be useful for for Navigating any conversation, ideally. And that's what we'll work on in my course. Maybe by the time these first and second years take my third year course, we'll see a better answer distribution when we get to William the Third and William the Silent. Well, thanks for listening. Talk to you again soon.